What's up, my people? Welcome to Fellowship Bible Church's Sermon Spotlight, where we are coming at you each and every week with a fresh weekend to debrief in an effort to send a biblical truth. What better way to do that than by the power of conversation? I'm Caleb Pearson. Joining me once again, the lovely Alicia Battaglia. Alicia, how are you? I'm doing great. And today, you if, if you're viewing on, on the screen, you are seeing the view from Eagles Rock. Okay, I was going to ask, where, where is Eagles Rock? So, um, it's up on the mountain. <laughs> is it, is, it is, is, is it local it's, Virginia? Yeah, it, yeah. Oh, okay, it's okay. Looking, that's, that's looking over Frederick County. Oh, wow, okay. Well, so y'all always yeah. use your own images. I would totally be using stock images. Yeah, but. my my sister came up for a visit, and we went on a hike, and nice. so that's a fresh picture from this weekend. Super sweet. Joining us once again, Mark Francis. Mark, how you doing, brother? What is up? I'm doing awesome. Doing great. Good to see you, man. It's a good day, good week. Absolutely, it is. It, dude, the weather's been beautiful outside. I've been loving it. It's like the spring we never had in the last ten weeks. It's Spring is here, and yesterday felt like summer. It was yeah, good. It did. It definitely did. Joining us once again, Senior Pastor Mark Carey. Mark, how you doing, man? Doing well. Good. good to see you all. Yeah, you too. Guys, it feels like we're, we're stepping back into society a little bit as of late. Uh, so I want to I talk about two things specifically today. Um, for our listeners, look back on this weekend, the, the first in-person service we've had in a while, and then look ahead at what's to come next weekend. Pastor Mark, I'll kind of let you, when we get to that point, tell us a little bit about what's coming. But um, first, Mark and Alicia, were you guys around this past weekend? Alicia, I think we had talked last week about how you guys were probably staying put. Yes, we okay. are staying put for at least the next few weeks. Right. Just uh, with the nature of my husband's work requires us to stay isolated as much as possible and use extra caution. Right, right. So let me ask you this. If you were watching online, could you tell there were people there? Did it feel different in any way? Yes, it did. I could sense uh, an extra special warmth. Uh, <laughs> and the there was definitely an interaction, which yeah. was neat. Yeah. And the, you can see the people in the front row from the screens, so that kind of you oh, get you a little go. bit of silhouettes from the heads. backs of people's heads. Yeah, Pastor, Pastor Mark's smile was just a little bit wider. But honestly, it was it was a little hard to know that there were people there and I wasn't. I felt like sure. it was a family reunion that I wasn't a part of. Um, so mm. I just I had to just be content and trust the Lord with that. That um, there. There will be brighter days ahead for for all of us, um, but I know that I'm not alone in that. Um, that there were many who weren't able to be there for various reasons, and so um, yeah, yeah. So and that's why continuing to post those that. online services are are perfect just for that. You know, I mean, it's going to be valuable in this transition to allow as many people to worship together yeah. as possible. Well, yeah. and they they've always been recorded, right? It's just ever since quarantine, there's a little bit more to it. Well, lately, when, before this, it was just the sermons that were recorded okay. and posted online. So gotcha. this is a change up for us, and, and I can see us kind of continuing in this direction from a worship ministry. We see the value in, yeah. in what happens throughout the entire service. So, Yeah, that's awesome. Pastor Mark, what, what was it like for you? I mean, I know we, so we had the, the aisle spread out, uh, effectively kind of half capacity. Um, how, how are you feeling regarding, you know, looking back on all three services? Well, it certainly is nice to have um, real people, faces, people you can engage in. Um, if you've done any type of public speaking, mm. you you know it's important to 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 talk with people there and and to engage in their faces and just yeah. have a have a dialogue and you can't do that i mean it's a one way dialogue but it, you you can't do that when it's an empty room mm. um so um it's it uh, yeah it was it's great it was it was great to see uh to see um folks and, and you know the body of christ a small proportion probably a fourth or a third of what sure. normally mm -hmm. would be there uh on a typical sunday but that um it was still um, it was still a, uh, there was still an energy, there was still an excitement and, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, 
it was fun. And Mark was in the front just greeting people and getting name tags on everybody. And he was, Dude, he was up there uh, yeah. working the crowd. So, so I was on the welcome team out in the parking lot, you know, waving everybody in. And it's funny because my fiance's cousins were in town. They've been once, but they were part of this welcome team. So I was like, so many people are like, who in the world are these people? Um, but that was fun. And in between services, I, I see Mark around in the corner in his, in his sweater vest. I was like, what in the world is going on? It's like 11.08. It's like, where, where are you going? <laughs> but it was so cool. They, they, were, they were able to talk to him and that, that meant a lot to them because they were visiting uh, and serving and they, they happened to have a conversation with Mark. So, or should I say uh, Reverend Mark, according to the Winchester Star article. <laughs> hey, I didn't call me anything other than late for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we were in the paper. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, the Winchester Star came out and... Uh, um yeah it was um it was fun to see our security team in action because there was this guy back there taking pictures during the service and boom that they and the, the frederick yeah. county uh um, oh wow the sheriff's deputy who are you and what, what are your uh what are your credentials and yeah a little yeah. surprise visit unannounced but yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> well and it, it's interesting to see the there's a variety of responses to that to that article in the paper of, of us gathering back. Um, and it, it's just interesting to, you know, to see the different ways people are going to react to that. But the, the, the quotes they used in the article were so cool because it was just, you know, highly supportive of our elders and also just explaining all the guidelines that, you know, we were following. There's a lot of intentional thought yeah. placed into, into the service. There, at least from my perspective, there's no element. Well, Everybody go back to church and then we'll figure it out. It was very systematic. No, you know, John Van Drunen and his team and the worship team and tech people, but, you know, Van Drunen really has thought this through, um, yeah. I think, as, as, as best as you can um, to get this. So it was really, a, I thought, a, a very smooth, uh, uh, encouraging, and it was probably a good thing we didn't have half the people come back at one time because I, right. I don't know if that might have been too much too overwhelming sure. um and of course this coming weekend it's looks like we're going to do some things differently uh even then so um hey we're, we're going to change our name from fellowship bible church to the first church of resiliency or something <laughs> <laughs> as we uh do yeah. different things but you know that the value and we'll, we'll get in that i'm sure in just a moment but the value <clears throat> is that we are reminded it, it's you know we can get so a cookie cutter or so institutionalized and this is what we do and this is how we do it and we, we can forget that the whole emphasis that the church is this family mm. uh, that's the theme for the next few weeks um, the family of god in a fallen world and as a family um yeah it, it's not it's you're not defined by um, where you worship uh, mm. or even how you worship. It's it's that you do it together as a as a body of Christ, as as members of the the household of God, and it can be outside, like we're going to be doing this coming weekend, and in, in nice weather, or it can be in multiple services and different parts of a of a building. Um, it can be online in your home, um, but we want to. Um, um, emphasize that it's it's we're not defined by those um, constraints, but but who we are in Christ. What you're spilling the beans, Mark? Wow! All right, so give us give us a rundown. Yeah, so so, <laughs> so we, we we've pivoted away from a yeah, Romans I, routine. I'm clueless. I know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Mark, what what does this weekend, this coming weekend, hold? Well. Um, we're going to have a, a, a family time, an FBC family time um, that is um, going to be uh, out, outdoors. We're going to have a worship service outdoors that we're planning. And, um, you know, it, it, the, the next week it might be different again, back in the building and different services. But uh, it looks like the weather is going to be uh, nice and pleasant. And, um, you know, I think one of the things that struck us all this weekend is the we we have missed the 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 coming together as a church family and and this idea of just being so separated um and even in the the three services that we did it was great it was wonderful but you still felt separated 
and um, because of the requirements and the constraints yep. and stuff and the, the, that you've already referred to and how careful we've been to, to do this regathering carefully, uh, we're still missing something. And so this weekend, we're going to um, have one service uh, at, uh, at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. And it's going to be outdoors. Bring a lawn chair. Uh, we'll, we still have information that will be on our website. But uh, all you have to know right now is a 10 o'clock service outside. As many people as we can come. Uh, yeah, there will there will be plenty of room. I actually was just talking plenty of room. a little bit yep. a little bit earlier. And so obviously for those of you who may or may not be aware, I mean there there are these new executive orders. You know, there's these new we're rolling with the the punches a little bit and trying to make sure we're doing right by everybody involved. And so the elders have, you know, decided to go that direction. I think it's awesome. I mean, I was talking with somebody at least for at least for this week. No, exactly. I mean, this is gonna be, I think, a week by week thing, but talking to somebody that was here this past weekend, they, they said, you know, I'm, I'm glad I was back, but it didn't really feel like we were back. Uh, and one thing I kind of told them was that it's because we're, we're kind of not yet back in, in the truest sense of the word, or maybe the, their standard for being back. I mean, one thing we've been clear about is even in that announcement video, Mark, a couple weeks ago was we are beginning the regathering process. This is going to be a process. So your attendance, it makes you a part of that. Uh, it makes you a part of that regathering process. You, you know, you can say, I, yeah, I was there when there were a few hundred people spread across three services, you know, six feet or greater apart. I, I was there when they decided to go outside for a week. And it, you're, you're seeing the body start to come back together. And, and I think it's in a healthy way, in an appropriate way. And it's in a way that nobody should, you know, be able to, to bring a hammer of justice down on us or say, you know, this is not following the rules. Yeah. And Mark, I think it's been what, I think it's been 10 years since we've had an outdoor all gathering um, uh, fellowship family uh, service. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, uh, with, with our, you know, celebration, this being our 40th year that FBC has been around, we, we were hoping to do that even last weekend. <laughs> the Memorial Day right. weekend was the weekend that we were hoping to do an all church gathering. And just with obviously the the coronavirus being what it is and we've had to adapt we still want to have this big mass celebration but you know what the way god has intended it this is going to happen this coming week for these purposes and these reasons yeah. but it has been 10 years since we've gone outside and if you look at the life of fbc and over the course of the 40 years i've been doing tons of research and talking to people and interviewing people meeting outside is a staple of fbc and doing it on campus, on site, in the parking lot, in the courtyard. There is just a history of having these gatherings from when we were a small church to now when we're a large church and celebrating, whether it be the 20th anniversary or 25th or a 4th of July celebration. And so this is just going to be something that's a marker in the life of FBC. Hey, we had this gathering due to the, this virus, but we all were able to come together as a family. Mark is preaching on, you know, the church. We are all excited and pumped about it. So that's something to definitely look forward to. And, and we're, you know, yeah. And, and like you said, Caleb, we're rolling with the punches, you know. So because we want to meet the government standards and guidelines, we, I still think social distancing is still going to be something to be aware of and cautious mm -hmm. um, and, and be mindful of, of just the way, Mark, you put it in that video a couple weeks ago of still knowing that there's people wrestling with how to deal with this and a lot of different opinions on how to do that still be mindful and gracious with those that are around us but we can have a thousand people in the parking lot this week and it'll be great yeah, yeah and there's there's no condemnation for those that aren't still coming <laughs> fbc is by no means saying here's the policy you better get there you're not right with jesus i mean there's no element of that it's just now yeah. what's the what can we make possible for people to gather uh, that, that they can discern, you know, the, the Battaglia family, because of work and circumstances, they're not coming. I mean, nobody sees us getting on and being like, oh, Alicia, here we go. What does she have? Is that like, it's like, okay, you were there. What was it like for you watching, you know, the top of people's heads in the front row? I mean, it's, it's the time is unprecedented. And part of me is like excited. And I almost like, I got chills earlier in the hallway because I'm hearing JVD talk about the vision for this outdoor service. And Mark, you brought it up that 40th outdoor service anniversary thing we had planned that was one of the first things we started to mourn when the quarantine hit and we knew we weren't going to be able to do it you know oh the month of may like we're not going to be able to do this service and it was like oh dang it like that was going to be such a moment of celebration and here we are the lord has allowed us that same weekend 
to have an outdoor service in which we were just we didn't think that was going to happen so that was super cool and and i'm yeah i'm personally very excited to and by the way, we still will make uh, um, availabilities to have it be online. Um, oh, yeah. We're going to try to do a, try to do a live stream, and we'll capture that and we'll post that. So, um, for those of you that can't come, it'll look different. It'll be interesting, and yeah. no guarantee of quality, but it'll be out there. So we want yeah. we'll, we'll do the best we can. So I have a question. So will you um, will people be parking in the parking lot and then taking their chairs to a grassy area or will you be staying at your vehicle? Hmm. What are the logistics of what that's going to look like? Yeah, logistics are still being worked out. There's going to be a team of people meeting even this afternoon and continuing during the week. But the goal right now is to have the actual gathering space be in that nursery parking lot area by the administrative buildings. Um, and, and so use that parking lot and the space behind it for all the people with chairs and then parking in the north and south wings. Yeah, um, there's that and, so and there's so, a huge field and there's almost a natural amphitheater and the, we need to be close enough to the building for Wi-Fi purposes, but I think the plan is to use grass to, to sit and then the parking lots to park. So more details will come. And, yeah. and so as we post things on the website, we'll be getting the more information, but all right now that you need to know is 10 o'clock Sunday morning. And I would again, suggest get there early get your space, get your parking, and we'll be ready to roll. We do keep people on their toes, don't we? Uh, you know, what? hey, what, what's next? Uh, what, what, what are we gonna do? You know, we suggested- hey, uh, in the, Being in on the, the roof. Staff, we suggested a pastoral staff meeting the other day that we should have a big dunking tank with disinfectant, right? And, you know, put a pastor in there and hit, you know, and do the dunking thing. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't agree who should be in the tank, you know, so we just we can't do it. John Watson. Yeah. 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 I suggest we would ever make the biggest splash and they, we argued about that, but anyway. <laughs> you know, who wants to get dunked in a tank of Clorox? But anyway. Some people need it. Okay, moving right along. <laughs> so yeah, I mean my understanding, Mark, is that we've started a, a mini series so to speak or, or a i don't know how long it's going to last but we've we've pivoted sort of out of romans um talking just about the body of believers the church what it actually is who we actually are uh where where were we this past week and and the, uh, are we going to be continuing on that path yeah so the um uh just for a break from from romans and given this regathering time and and re re uh, focusing on the nature of the church, what the church is called to be and do, we've been a, a bit separate from all that here these these weeks, and you can kind of not grow apart, but you can. It's it's easy to lose sight. We get all caught mm. up in the what's going on. It's news twenty four seven. Everybody's talking about pandemics and stuff like that, mm. and it's easy to forget that the most important uh, entity on the face of the earth is the body of Christ. Um, it mm. is. Um, it is the the bride of Christ. It's the family of God, and so I just wanted to take some weeks and uh, put a, a refocus on that. Um, this week we talked about um, um, kind of that metaphor of the family. There's various metaphors that are used of the church, the body, you know, and the, the sheep metaphor and the building metaphor. But the family metaphor is the most frequently used metaphor for the body of Christ. So um, that's where we started. Uh, we enter. The family through the uh, the blessing of adoption, um, as uh, J.I. Packer in his book Knowing God says, it's it it's uh, even a greater truth than the truth of justification because it 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 brings us to this this real relationship idea of God. We're adopted in by our Father, uh, so we enter through adoption. We um, that adoption gives us the privilege of enjoying God in a different way. He is our Father, Abba Father. And we can cry out to him as Abba Father. It's a whole different relationship. That mm -hmm. idea of family was not found in the Old Testament. Israel was never called the family of God. Um, that's unique to us as the body of Christ, the church, the called out ones. He is our Father. And, uh, and then we enrich each other's uh, within the body, each other as uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. We are members one of another in this family idea. Monday, uh, Memorial Day weekend, uh, we our our family, our son and and, and uh, daughter in law and three kids from Charlottesville surprised us. They came up and <laughs> our other kids were there and and um, 
and John and Susan Avery because uh, we share grandkids together and and um, and then uh, Lisa's uh, my wife's uh, siblings from Nebraska uh, Lisa's uh, mother had passed away and so they were here so it was just kind of family gathering outside by the way and it was you know the body of Christ the church of Jesus Christ is to have that sense of a family connectedness so that was what we were focusing on um, this past week, the value of the family of God in a fallen world. Awesome. And it's so timely too, because you know, as we feel potentially disconnected, I think even you shared this in your sermon and I felt it too. It's kind of, you kind of get a little cozy, you get a little nice. Okay, weekends are a little bit easier and you're only preaching one time and oh, we can sleep in and there's that almost lackadaisical physical laziness that you can get into and I almost liken it to like going to the gym you know you, you don't go to the gym regularly and you don't work out you kind of kind of get in this mode of oh why go you know I'll be okay and then weeks go on and then all of a sudden you're putting on the pounds you're like what is happening here you know and so it, it's something about that church gathering as well that you can kind of we you don't want to get into that mode of feeling disconnected from the family of God and, and our brothers and sisters and, and have that call and have that desire to not just know and learn more about God, but to also share in that and participate with other people around us who are our brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and when, that, Yeah, we've been missing one of the biggest accountability statements of our generation, and that is, hey, I didn't see you at church this weekend. How are things? Uh, that's gone now. Um, and that, that idea of, okay, I watch the sermon once a week, or, or you know, I, I dive into the Word. I mean, even with these youth group kids, you know, trying to hammer in devotionals and then a daily walk with Christ during this time. Oh, you know, you find out, oh, somebody only reads the Bible once a week. What if you only fed a baby once a week? What if, what if you only took a shower once a week? I mean, you, you start to put it in perspective of nourishment and, and what's going to sustain you through this time. It's like, wait, wait, you take a shower more than once a week? <laughs> <laughs> I do, yeah. But now uh, he's got his new, now he's got his new house. He's at once a week. Before yeah. it, it might have been less than that. Yeah, that's true. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, you gotta be a, a living part of the body. Um, in that that First Corinthians twelve chapter, it's just Paul hammers you over the head with it. There's so many different examples of how how we need each other and how we can pursue Christ alongside each other. So I just thought that that was cool, Alicia. What were some what were some thoughts that that put on your heart this, this past weekend? Well, um, the whole topic of family um, and then watching the worship service with, you know, our my church family there and not being a part and having that hole in my heart, I, I realized that that thing that I have that void and you know, missing mm -hmm. and not being a part because that's evidence of I am connected. And when I'm not there, that, you know, I, I'm meant to be connected with the body of Christ and we're one in members. And um, so I, uh, through the sermon, really thought about us being a body and the unity we have and the diversity of gifts that we've been given in that Romans 12 passage and then verses six through eight talks more about that. Um, and the, just the, I appreciated the uniqueness of how God puts us all together as one body. Um, and, but, so I was talking with my husband last night and I was like, so, you know, what, do you have any thoughts for tomorrow for the podcast? And he said that the thing that really hit him was, um, God is father and he has a unique story I think probably all of us from what I understand we all come from a Christian home and we have Christian parents and I had a wonderful I have a wonderful father and so the way that I view God as father and family life and all of that is very different than how he has viewed it in the past. And um, so he just, he, and he's given me permission to share this. Um, he was abandoned by both his mother and father as a child. And um, so he grew up without a dad. And um, 
so he's he's always felt somewhat distant um and the whole idea of god as being a father is he's he knows what the bible has said you know says about god as father but he still had felt a distance that has right. carried over from his relationship with his earthly father um but he said that as he's getting older he's and drawing you know as god continues to just pull him into him you know and uh he's cherishing that relationship more and more as he gets older and and you know as a father himself that is being cultivated too um and he's there's scripture that from psalm that god is a father of the father fatherless and a protector of the widow widows and he settles the solitary in a home and that just when he he got saved i think he was probably about eight um, but he didn't have anybody to shepherd him or anything like that but just knowing that god was a father to the father fatherless went with him throughout his life and still continues to do um and so there's there's truths that he's gripped uh, and held on to in his life that have been um real strengthening and help to cultivate that relationship knowing that wow. god's not going to forsake him and he's he's omnipresent he's a protector he's a provider he's a loving god he's a loving father um well i think that speaks to the importance of knowing specifically god's character uh, I, I remember this topic coming up in my internship i i, I thought it was with pastor mark but maybe with a different pastor um where a lot of times, especially somebody who maybe grew up in my situation, they'll evangelize in that way. God is a father. But if it, depending on who you're talking to, that might be a bad thing. They might say, oh, God is a father, then I want nothing to do with them, you know, because of the warped view or experience with family. And so that to see that barrier, you know, that that growth of like, okay, wow, like this is biblically what what is being said about that. We want to try to put God in, in our social construct, but obviously, you know, we're all fallen and these, it's a depraved situation. So to see the scriptures speak to, okay, this is what a loving father, you know, ought to be. And this is what, you know, Christian fathers are to be, um, is, is pretty cool to help further understand that. Well, and Alicia, I know you and I know Andy, and he is a great role model for your kids. And so for him to come out of that and to show kind of the opposite situation for what he went through is a testament to God working mm -hmm. in his life. Right. Using, you know, using Andy to display God's glory through being a father, through your family, I think is, is special. And that's, that's kind of a, a revealing of, of who God is and seeing his character just through that testimony, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. When I, I think it, it blurs the line a little bit of, in a good way, uh, from like family counseling to, to church life. You know, back when I first kind of came on staff, I was like, okay, there's this home center, there's this push on the family, and then there's the rest of the church. But the more I looked at that, the more I said, that's not true at all. Uh, this is all the, the, the family identity and, and language and metaphor, like Pastor Mark said, is it's there and it's applicable to all of it. And so if we can have that level playing field. We can say, okay, like this is this is my brother and, and or sister in Christ that I'm dealing with in this situation, which I just think is, I don't know, is really cool. It goes, uh, it's cross-generational. I mean, you can mm -hmm. be a single person. Uh, you may not have a, a, a husband, wife, or kids. You're still mm -hmm. single. Um, but uh, then that idea of brothers and sisters come in. And, uh, mm -hmm. or uh, as Paul talked about in Titus, there are, you know, older men that, that uh, are, are uh, impact young men and older women are to encourage the younger women. So it's, it's a cross generational. Um, and um, uh, sadly, the, the metaphor of the family, um, but it was, that was probably true in the, in the Bible days too, but it, it, it takes some bad hits because uh, of the attacks that are against the family today. Um, I don't, I, I didn't, find this, uh, I guess, before this podcast, it popped in my head right now, but there was an article a week or two ago in uh, one of the national newspapers, I don't think it was the New York Times, um, about um, some guy writing an editorial about how 
we, we need to do away with that idea of the nuclear family, that, that, it's, uh, that it's disruptive to society. Mm-hmm. Well, that it's, we're being bombarded with that um, all along. Um, the fact of the matter is we have people growing up in our churches today mm-hmm. or who are in our churches today not having grown up in a, um, in a, in a loving family unit. Uh, and so it's very difficult even to understand, as you were explaining, this concept of the family. And then if you, and if you miss that, if the metaphor of the family is the most frequently used metaphor of the local church, and you've not been a part of that, it's going to be hard to get assimilated maybe into the life of the local church. And so, again, let's go to the scriptures, you know, and over those next weeks, that's what we're going to do. But um, what, what, what does it speak to me? Uh, what, what is the standard? What's the ideal that God is calling us to? And whether I've experienced it here on earth or not, doesn't matter, because in that sense, I have the Holy Spirit within me. And as we um, uh, come to the Word and, and ask Him, open our eyes, help me understand what it means to have you as my father and brothers and sisters in Christ. Help me to be conformed to that. Help me to, to develop that in me, that longing, that desire, and that building those relationships. And which is why at the end of the, the sermon this week, and actually, actually throughout the whole worship time, we were, were, were um, providing opportunities to engage our hearts, our minds, heavenward. So we're not just, you know, um, uh, spectators or mindless participants, but that we are really engaging with the Lord. So at the end of the sermon, it was that prayer of meditation that helped me to see who you are as as what it means that you're my father, that uh, the people sitting around me are, uh, are, are brothers and sisters in Christ. And then what, what does that mean to me? And how am I to respond to that? And well, and the end goal is not just so I can feel like a brother to Pastor Mark. The end goal is to glorify God in that relationship. The end goal is to glorify God in all our relationships. And Which is next that's... week's sermon, by the way. This oh, week's week. spoilers. Yeah, but the, there you go. Bring a blanket and come, come find out. But, and if you go to the scriptures, <clears throat> the scriptures speak endlessly towards deliverance and towards adoption. So no matter your family circumstance, you will not be feeling guilty or lesser. If you look at the Bible, yes, it's the most common metaphor, but there are <laughs> plenty of verses that will say, okay, this, this Bible stuff, it does apply to me. I mean, my, my sister was adopted from China. She was born behind a grocery store and found on the side of the road. That warps the, the family life that she was, was born into. But through this adoption process, the, the living representation of the gospel has happened in my nuclear home. And so to see that happened in, in the life of Hallie, my sister, to think far more than that, that idea of adopted by God. It's just, it's really, really cool. Uh, Alicia, I did have a question for you. I mean, be, because you're one of the, probably many, honestly, that are continuing to stay home, you know, for a variety of reasons. What is the, the, the key to staying involved? I mean, you mentioned, you know, the, the hole in your heart, so to speak, of missing out on the service. Um, how, how do how do you stay connected? How can we best serve uh, somebody who continues to stay home during these next couple of weeks? What are, what are your thoughts on that? Well, um, I think primarily as far as a relational person to person is our small group. Mm-hmm. Um, just staying connected with a, a small group of people. And there, I, I know that there's our church has multiple small groups, but there, if you don't have a small group, find one. <laughs> I think that that's vital um, in staying connected because that is even just that takes the masses of people and brings it down where mm. you can really generally uh, share your life with one another. You can't share your life with everybody in our church. It's huge, but I can share my life, what's going on with the people in my small group. You know, there's uh, two handfuls of us. So um, we can get to know one another that way. I want to say also, so the, the, the news and everybody is highlighting the essential workers. The pastoral church staff are essential workers a hundred percent. And the way that you all have uh, sewn into our lives here in our four walls 
um, has been remarkable. And the fact that you guys are working diligently to be creative, to reach out to us and to the youth and even the, the nursery, like the preschool, I, I, I I don't on Facebook hardly at all, but I saw that they were doing Zoom little people, like the littles. And it was (laughs) remarkable. So so they can see each other's faces. And, um, you know, so it just is, um, it's really neat to see the intentionality of this is, the coronavirus is not going to stop God's work. God's spirit moving forward to his people. And and to speak to that real quickly, for those experiencing fatigue or restlessness with the situation and with Zoom and with all this, good, okay? I had to realize, you know what, this is good. I think the Lord's instilling in me a little bit of restlessness and fatigue with this situation. I haven't seen Mark Francis' beautiful face in literally two months. I've seen him here every week, but I haven't seen that man. I haven't seen any of you. Uh, So it's just, it's, I'm so ready, you know, to get back and, and see what it's going to be like. But this is, this is the front lines. This is the kind of stuff you you watch in movies and read about in books. And here we yeah. are living it. I'm okay. open to be taken out for lunch anytime. Hey, that's true. <laughs> that's true. You're right there. Mission, You're like 40 mission feet barbecue. Away from me. Mission barbecue. You sit outside, man. Let's go, dude. I did. Hey, I Ooh. got my I got my lock for a takeout last night. Oh gosh. So well, got, okay. Oh, this yeah. my constant this is the coffee. I need to ask Mark that question, but I did. So I have sat outside at Mission Barbecue and at Oakstone Pizza downtown uh, and at Tai Wen. So feels a little bit normal. Mark, you weren't it's on possible. this week. Uh, Pastor Dennis was, and we we all went around and said, "What restaurant are you most looking forward to reopening and and dining in?" What would your What would your answer be to that? Who you? Oh, me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't uh, need to hear Mark's again. I, I, La Coretta, I think, is what he uh, what he said. Oh gee, I don't know. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a connoisseur of all fine food. <laughs> um, <laughs> I said food so, court food in the mall, so I, there's I, nowhere to go below that. I don't miss anything because I got a great, a great cook here at home, and and um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, we, we yeah, we we love uh, Win Thai. Um, yeah, Thai one's so good. Mm. Yeah, it's. Um, I'd have to. I don't know. I, well, think about it. Pray about it. Okay. Uh, you can uh, shoot me, shoot me a text anytime, uh, and we'll go. Okay. We'll go get it. JVD okay. will pay for it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Circling back around real quick. Yeah. So, answering kind of what Alicia said said as far or kind of how do you stay connected? Something that we did introduce this past weekend in the worship time was this more personal reflection, and that was kind of something that Mark Carey was encouraging the worship team to kind of think about because mm-hmm. if you're not in the corporate gathering time, how can you continue on and feel connected to the body? And it is with a more of a personal worship um, time on your own with your families on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. And so staying connected to God allows you to stay connected to others as well. And so having that opportunity to, to even if you weren't there together, so the Battaglia family is there, to have that personal time of worship of reflection and making melody in your heart to God, to be able to have that kind of a dialogue with God, to look at the scriptures, you know, and, and we read plenty of passages, but the one to me that was standing out was John 1, 12, you know, which says to them, he gave the right to become children of God. Mm-hmm. And that was a passage that, that we were just reflecting on before the sermon and boom, there it is, you know, and so that, that came to my mind as I'm listening to the sermon, which is great. And so to be able to stay connected to each other, first comes with staying connected to God. So that that personal response of worship every day to me is going to be critical for all of us. So when we do all get back together, um, it is that kind of booming explosion of hearts joining together to to celebrate and worship. So that that to me is, I think, a good direction for us when we are gathering to have that modeling of what does personal inner worship look like as well as the corporate outer worship. Absolutely. And just to just remember, we're all going, hopefully, to the feet of the same God, where, wherever we are, whatever we're dealing with. That is our that is our endpoint. That's where the true fellowship and connection can happen. So that's well, super and awesome. the the bat, you know, back to the gospel. The father did not spare his son, but he gave him up for us all. And he did that so that we can be united to Christ, in Christ, and united with one another. And the Holy Spirit is very much alive and working among us. And 
Um, so being mindful of what Jesus did makes this all possible. Mm. And um, so that, that final prayer that you put on the screen at the end of the sermon, Mark, was uh, it was really meaningful. And it did. It gave us an opportunity to really engage intimately with our Father. Um, and that's neat. That's needful. So that's neat. That's awesome. It's, it's a awesome. discipline that we need to keep uh, nur nurturing. Right. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, steps towards whatever normalcy is going to look like are happening. So glory to God for that. Uh, the fact of the matter, everybody, is that sermons are not meant to just take an hour, but rather transform a lifetime. Until next time, much love and God bless. Mm -hmm.